Hello one, hello all, it's your boy Scoob Bingo. You saw the title, you clicked the video, so you already know what the fuck is going on. Talking about a movie that I seen about a month ago, and if I'm being honest, I forgot all about it. <laughs> the problems that I had with this movie is nothing to do with what I'm sure I'm gonna read all about in all these comments or reviews, rather. Um, it's just more so with the movie. I thought it was, let's just say that I walked out of the movie underwhelmed. Misery May says, I did it for my wife. But what's more interesting is that there's a tag that says America porn and another one that says fucking straight people. God, those straight people are really ruining everything. JJJ23 says, damn, didn't think it would be this bad. Watch it because my brother wanted to, but I disowned him. I'm glad that movies are getting in the way of our family relations now. BD refs. This movie is what turned me into a sexist. By the way, I'm reading all these reviews so far, nothing constructive has been said. <laughs> Karen says, I took a little nap, and when I woke up, Jude Law was the bad guy. Or became the bad guy. Well, if there's anything you can count on, you can count on Jude Law being the bad guy. And uh, how can I take your review serious if you're saying you fell asleep during the movie? Oh my god. Yamabushi98. Brie Larson is a gender-fluid Superman that identifies as a block of wood. Bad directing and even worse writing that gives us a Nick Fury that's equal parts useless and embarrassing. A cardboard standee of an Agent Coulson and a Mary Sue hero of zero conflict and obstacles beyond a horribly cliched amnesia. And less said about the ridiculous and also pointless cat the better. Tepid fan fiction at best. I'm not saying that this movie was a half a star rating. Uh, but I agree that Nick Fury was really used weirdly in this movie. I like the dynamic between him and Brie Larson, but at the same time, he was a really wasted character. Also, Agent Coulson. <laughs> oh god, this one's just gorgeous. Big Screen Butler says, Haven't actually watched, but can't see how I could relate to a female superhero, so half a star from me. I'm sure you could relate to Superman, him being a Kryptonian, not from Earth, and being able to lift things over his head and throw them with such ease. Oh man. Spencer, this movie is going to make little girls want to join the military. You are not immune to propaganda. Jesus. Huddy says Captain Marvel is to film what Cheerios is to cereal and not the honey nut kind. <sighs> yes, you know what? I will agree. The movie is very bland, but one star? <laughs> See, these, these people are, are creative with their writings, with their reviews rather. I'll, I'll give them that. Yo, why am I dying at the Supreme Chun says, like watching video game cutscenes you can't skip. <laughs> why? Why do I know exactly what that means? Oh my god. Look, I'm like, I am like searching thoroughly for some constructive criticism and there's just a lot of like one-liners or something clever to say about the movie being how bland it is. And I'll agree the movie is very bland. Like I said, I forgot about it already when one month's time... Maybe it's the fact that it's squeezed in between Endgame and Infinity War, but I don't know. I feel like a good movie would just be a good movie on its own, on its own merit, and I feel like this just isn't it. Whereas there's a few good things to take away from it, but in the overall grand scheme of things, the fact that I forgot about it in a month's time just isn't uh, isn't good. The thing with Larson, I, th I feel like people love or hate her. I don't think anyone's down the road with her performance. I didn't really particularly care for her in this movie, and I don't think it's because of the way she played it or her performance, I think it's more so the writing of the movie. I don't think that she was at, at no point I was emotionally invested in her character. And I think that that being said, it, it is more so to do with the writing because obviously Brie Larson is an amazing actress. She has an Oscar to her name. I would give it five stars because I'm a raging lesbian, but it's getting one star because Fury was homophobic for telling Carol to lose the flannel. Yo, why y'all complain about everything? I don't... Darren, Captain Ass, Captain Ass, everyone, what a review. Jesse says, imagine having an average lifespan of 75 years and wasting two hours on this. The only redeeming aspect of this debacle was the fact was that the members of REM get more royalties. What? Rebecca says, why are the hangar doors always open? Doesn't anyone care about their aircrafts being stolen? That's a solid point. Matt Morris, getting very disrespectful, says, about as good as Suicide Squad. Well, I don't agree with that, <laughs> but it was very bland. I think there's a difference between a movie being bland and then a movie just being 
outrightly bad. <laughs> Toilet Man says it wasn't good at all. Even for a superhero film, it was just so bad that if it weren't for Samuel Jackson or the laughably bad CGI, I would have just left. For being an Oscar winner, Brie Larson was a bland piece of cardboard. Her motivations were garbage and I felt nothing for her character. There were no consequences in the story at all. And if it weren't for the endgame hype, this film would have been nothing. Wow. Uh, I don't agree about the CGI being laughably bad. I actually think that the CGI used for Samuel Jackson was quite good and, and worked for me, at least. Brie Larson being a bland piece of cardboard. Yeah, like I said, more so in the writing. I will agree that there were kind of no consequences to the story. I didn't feel like Brie Larson was as mad as she should have been to Jude Law bet betraying her. She was just like, oh, okay, let's go kill my friends and this person that betrayed me like it's nothing like let's just go do it um ronin was completely criminally underused that's a character that was so he was a weird one in the gardens of the galaxy because at times he was badass but he was also very underused and then they bring him back just to do the same thing he just doesn't do anything in this movie except for stand around it's insane i'm going to end it with this one hayden abbott says the mid credit scene was better than the whole movie Yeah, the whole movie doesn't have as much uh, consequence or weight as the end credit scene does. And I feel the same about Ant-Man and the Wasp. I think that the end credit scene was more <laughs> impactful than the entire movie. And it's not because that I'm just so involved in the hype chain of Endgame. It's more so the fact that both these movies, Ant-Man and the Wasp and Captain Marvel, their movie, their storyline is just nothing happens in it. It's just a very contained story that... Someone starts here and then they end in the same place. I don't think anything monumental happens in Ant-Man and the Wasp. Or, like, the only thing I could think of is the Quantum Realm and it's just kind of thrown in there. Yes, they use, utilize it in the, in, the, in the plot, but I don't think it had as much impact as it should have. Uh, the same can be said for Captain Marvel. Apart from me feeling no emotional attachment to any characters, there's also no weight to the story. There's no nothing consequential. I understand that this is a prequel and this dates back to, to years before a lot of things in this uh, universe has happened, but still, I feel like the, the movie should have given me something to care about, and I don't think it does. Wow. All right, so I've been recording for almost like 30 minutes now. I've found so little of constructive criticism, so I'm just going to take the things that I got and then see if I can spin it into something entertaining for you guys. If you like this video, give it a like. If you like this idea, subscribe if you have not done so already. And if you are subscribed, I thank you. I'm Scoobino from the fifth row, and I'm gone.